Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today about more than the sum of its parts, the rationale for using Darwin Core to integrate biological observations. My name is Abby Benson. I'm a biologist with the US Geological Survey. I'm also the US Node Manager for the Global Biodiversity Information Facility and the Ocean Biodiversity Information System. So I wanna to start today talking about the parable of the blind men and an elephant. So in this parable, the uh, blind men had never encountered an elephant before. And so each one came up to the elephant uh, on a different part of the ele elephant and had a different experience with it, uh, different sort of observations of this animal. One man touched the side and found it to be like a wall. One man touched the tusk and said, oh, this is like a spear. Another one touched the trunk and said, oh, this animal is like a snake. Whereas another one touched the tail and said, oh, this is like a rope. So they each were right in their own way about the animal that they were assessing. But what they really needed to do was to bring these observations together, to integrate them together, to get a holistic view of this elephant and what it actually looked like. And the way that they would do that is through language. So language is how they would uh, bring their observations together, integrate them together, so they could have a holistic view. I'm going to argue today that our observations of species in their environments are much the same as the blind men and the elephant. We have researchers who are doing really great work all across the globe on species, they really get to know their systems very well, and they have a really um, important understanding of those species in, in the environments that they are working in. But in order to uh, really understand, let's say, the essential biodiversity variable population abundance, and um, let's choose coral reef fishes as the, the species that we're looking at, you know, in order to really understand this well, we need to bring these observations together. We need to integrate them so that we can understand the whole elephant, not just the different parts, which uh, might be affected by the conditions in those areas, as, which may vary across systems. And so the way to bring these observations together is through Darwin Core. So Darwin Core is a list of fields and their definitions as they relate to biodiversity data. And so really what's key for Darwin Core is that you have a biological observation and it's spatio-temporal occurrence, so you know where it is in space and um, in time, and any supporting evidence. So this could be sampling event type of data, it could be eDNA type of data, it could be any sort of observations of the biology of our Earth. And any supporting evidence, so any sort of measurements about those species like lengths, weights, abundance, all of those types of information can be standardized using Darwin Core so that we can integrate those together. And here I have an example of some data sets that I found in some repositories that I know of. So I went into those repositories and downloaded these three data sets. And so while these meet the, the first two um, tenets of the FAIR principles, they were findable and accessible, the interoperability is a little bit lacking. So for instance, if we look here at date, the, the date you know, column is not called the same, so that would make it kind of hard initially to integrate these data sets, but it's also not following the same standard. So it's not documented in the same way across these three data sets. So that's also going to make it hard to integrate these data sets. Similarly, scientific name, which is really important for our um, for biodiversity type of work, you know, in the top and the bottom data sets, the scientific names are column headers in the data. Whereas in the middle one, it's a it's a column with all the scientific names within that column. So that's going to make it hard to integrate these data sets. And finally, we have latitude and longitude, which might be called different things across different data sets. 
but we can only find that uh, in the bottom data set here. We don't have it in the top two, so that information is missing. It might be really key for the work we're doing. So let's say that these are those three data sets that we just looked at that are a little bit difficult to integrate together. We, if we transform those to Darwin Core so that they align to the biological data standard Darwin Core, the column headers all along the top are going to be exactly the same um, and the information in them should follow the standard. So in the uh, case of date, it should follow the ISO standard for date. And that means that these data sets are going to be able to be integrated together into one integrated data resource. And we can perform observation level extractions across these data sets. So if we're interested in a particular species, we can pull out just those observations to look at and uh, do analyses on. Or maybe we're interested in a particular geographic area, we could pull out those observations that are within that geographic area and do analyses on those. So here's an example from the Ocean Biodiversity Information System. This is looking at one particular species. And we can see in OBIS that we have over 80,000 occurrences of this species and about 10,000 absence records. This is coming up from 58 different data sets and spans a range of 58 years. So, you know, here are those, uh, the top 20 actually of those 58 data sets. And we're able to integrate these 58 data sets together because they're using the standard, the biological data standard, Darwin Core. So that's how we're able to, in OBIS, search for this particular species, pull out those observation records of that species from these 58 different data sets. And what that looks like, and I apologize, it is a little small, but what I'm trying, I, you don't have to really see the data so much as know that all of the information is in the same column. Um, when you download the data out of OBIS for this species, you can see that it, these are all observations for that one species. And the information in there is going to be uh, all together in the same columns. Similarly, we can look at geographic areas, and uh, here is an example of the ecologically and biologically significant area, the Benguela upwelling system. We have over 600,000 occurrence records for this, um, this geographic extent. It's coming, it includes over 3,000 species coming from 134 different data sets and spanning a wide range of years. And what makes that possible is Darwin Core. And here are all those different data sets that, that we can see from this, um, from this system. These are the top 10 data sets pro providing the most observations uh, in, this, in this area. We can look at uh, marine world heritage sites. So this is the Everglades National Park and see that we similarly have 75, almost 75,000 occurrence records coming from 22 different data sets. And we're able to look at this system because all of those 22 data sets are using Darwin Core. And finally, another example is the large marine ecosystem Antarctica, which has nearly 500,000 occurrence records and comes in its 313 data sets that are providing those observations. So if we're going to understand holistically these areas, we're going to need to integrate observations from different researchers, from different projects over time, in order to get a really well-rounded understanding of the biodiversity in these areas. You might say to yourself, why do we really need to understand the whole elephant? Why, you know, why do we need to bring these data sets together? Can't we just, uh, have the pictures that come from the different parts of the elephant. Well, I would argue that um, initiatives like the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, IPBES, and the Convention on Biological Diversity requires to understand species at global scales and to really have a picture of how species are changing over time and how their population and abundances are, are changing over time. So, you know, IPBES is charged with 
uh, assessing the state of biodiversity and of ecosystem services for society. And to do that assessment, they're going to need data that can come in and be integrated together to get a full picture of, of biodiversity and ecosystem services. Similarly, the Convention on Biolog Biological Diversity has started to draft the 2030 agenda and the um, goals for that agenda. And we're going to need data to really um, pull together and to be able to inform these, um, these initiatives in a holistic way. And this is already happening. So here's an example from the Global Biodiversity Information Facility. There, uh, some, G some data from, uh, some GBIF mediated data was used in, a, um, in an analysis that was cited in an IPC special report on global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius. So this is that report and the research that was cited in this report was um, done by Warren and Price, and they used over 385 million occurrence records that are coming from GBIF mediated data. So they were able to extract these 350, 385 million occurrence records because it's all, all those occurrence records are following Darwin Core. And they were able to do an analysis to, that showed that limiting warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius would cut geographical range losses resulting from climate change in half. And that's something that was cited, that, that work was cited in this IPCC special report. So we can see that this, um, these integrated data sets are already being used for uh, reports of this nature. Similarly, OBIS was used in, a, in research from 2014, and this um, research looked at extinction intensity and invasion intensity for um, species globally, and they use data from OBIS in order to build these uh, models and forecasts. And that research was cited in this Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations report on the impacts of climate change on fisheries and aquaculture. So we can see that integrating these data sets together allows us to do assessments at broad spatial scales that are, are needed for reporting on the status of biodiversity across our world. And this can help us understand the entire elephant. So um, really pulling all of that information together helps decision makers know how to act or um, have informed ways of responding. And so I hope I've convinced you or at least made a, uh, a, 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 an effort to convince you that Darwin Core is the way to integrate biological observation data so that we can understand species at global spatial scales and uh, at over long temporal scales. And we will need to work together to do this. It's going to take all of us working together and um, integrating these observations together so that we can understand how biodiversity is changing over time. And it will, it's, while this work is not difficult, it does require effort. And so we need to come together and do this work together in order to integrate and uh, make these different observations of accessible and interoperable. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to you today about this. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me with any questions, comments. Um, would love to hear from you and look forward to questions. Thank you.